Anyway. Anyway. I would say we're probably here. We are here. We are back around the virtual campfire. We are back, even so. We are back around the virtual campfire, which means... Crackle, 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 fire noises, crackle, crackle. It's time for a Frithcast. Yay! You could sing. You could do the music, couldn't you, kitten? You could go. Meow, 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 meow. It's like the cat's duet, only with only one cat. Oh wait, I remember that one. Second soprano. Very good. Meow. Meow. And wow. so on. Wow. See, I wouldn't have known it. I know there's a... There I is know, a piece I know of there's a piece. the Cats duet. <coughs> I know there's a piece that's got like... for two cats. Two women shouting meow at each other. I... I, I that was as far as my cultural knowledge of uh, operatic uh, felinity... <laughs> uh, extended, I'm afraid. Uh, and, and, and assuming we're not counting cats as an opera, it being a musical. It be yes, I believe. Um, well, there is a lack of tragic death in cats, so I'm counting it as a opera, uh, as a musical, as a musical rather opera. than an opera. Yeah. Yes. D- every opera opera ends in tragic death, I assume. I don't know. I <coughs> always perceived it did. I know Tosca ends with tragic death. Spoiler, by the way. Yeah, you know, spoiler alert, everybody dies. She... It seems like, you know, musical Hamlet, really. Yeah, because I remember... Everybody's very happy about the fact that they're all dying. I remember Tosca ends with the titular character jumping off a castle parapet and then bouncing back into view slightly and then disappearing again. <laughs> because... Really? Well, there was a... I forget, there's... I'm sure there's been more than one, but I remember reading about a performance where they put, um, uh, they put like a... A sort of a trampoline, a trampoline yeah. crash mat thing for her to land on. Uh, only it was a bit too bouncy. So you actually <laughs> saw her sort of bounce up back into view and <laughs> disappear again. Yeah, okay. But, uh, I mean, I, I, I claim no great expertise on, on, on opera or indeed um, Shakespeare. Okay. We still need to do an episode where we're going to talk about Wagner and the, uh, Wagner and the Valkyries, which is really hard to say. Wagner and the Valkyries. I'm totally sober and I've had caffeine. Wagner and the Valkyries. Sounds in itself like a fairly good name for a band, though. Yeah. Lovely listeners, welcome around the virtual campfire. Crackle, crackle, fire noises. Crackle, crackle, fire noises. Welcome to Frithcast number 60. 60! 60! Yep. It's the big 6-0! It is. We've got to do something special. We need a cake. We always need cake. That's true. We need a bigger cake! I am all down with this plan. <laughs> oh. <coughs> Listeners, if you'll excuse us for a few minutes, we're going to go and eat large amounts of cake. And we'll come back shortly. Bye. Bye. OK, we're back. OK. That was good cake. Oh, yeah. Yeah. OK. So now we're quite happily full of cake. <laughs> we have coffee by the virtual campfire. It's amazing what you can do with editing. It is. <laughs> I'm going to edit cake into every day. It's great. Oh, yeah. So now we have coffee, okay. we're sat round the virtual campfire with you lovely listeners. We've made due observation of the fact that it's our 60th episode. 60th episode? 60th episode. You've been listening to this for <clears throat> 60 random mad episodes. 
we should do we should do like a, a a special a special episode. We could do we could take the cheap option and just do a clip show. We could. I mean, we do that in our random reels anyway. We do. Yeah. But not usually at a coherent pattern. No. With a, well, uh, no, they're the last interval, episode of every say. year. Oh, I suppose they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Or... The Yule, Yule episode <clears throat> for every year, random reel. Anyway, that's random reel. That's not the same as a clip show. Clip show is a, a cheap and unimaginative way of... Oh, it... I can do that. <laughs> I'm cheap and unimaginative. I am or... all over this. <clears throat> or we could do a special episode where we have to... Like, somebody locks up a trophy somewhere in the office and we all have... Somebody has to steal it. I'm good for that, too. Yeah? Yeah. That sounds good. I don't think anybody's ever done that before. No. Anyway, yeah. we'll think about it. Okay. Let's do that. In the meantime, let's get on with episode 60. Mm-hmm. And if you've never joined us before, welcome around the virtual campfire. Honestly, if they've never joined us before, they've probably gone by now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, come on back. It's fine. <laughs> We do actually get to talk heathenry in a minute it gets, or two. It gets more sensible as we go along. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. It doesn't get sensible. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Virtual Campfire and Fifthcast episode 60. I'm Suzanne Martin and I'm a UK ambassador for TAC, which is the Asatru community. And my name is Kate and I am ambassador of nothing whatsoever. It's a business card. What, ambassador of naught? Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I um, I'm not even even a heathen. Um, I do, in fact, uh, I'm I'm basically just the resident coffee powered druid, and I happen to live in your house. So yeah, there you go. hanging around for the food snacks at break. Time. Essentially, yeah, yeah, the cake we've just had. Oh yes, but there you go. So we talked in episode fifty nine about animal associates, mm-hmm. and we had a chat, a little bit of a chat about. Freya's ball, the battle ball. We did, yeah. And and I started to have images of the great big spider thing off Wild Wild West, only like a boar instead. Yeah, there's a good image. Like a sort of fat at at. A fat at at with eight spider legs. I'm yeah. in for this image. <laughs> that farts flowers. I am so good for this. <laughs> Hello, listeners. We need your new reinterpretations of Freya's Battle Ball, and uh, yeah, there's some mad stuff going on in my brain right now, but there yeah. you go. So what I wanted to spend this episode talking about was some of the other uh, mighty toys that the gods and goddesses have, collectively between them. Mm-hmm. And needless to say, a lot of these are made by the dwarves. Yep. And it's fair to say that Loki is involved, one way or another, with the making of a lot of them. Suggesting that they're probably not always going to go as anticipated. Yeah, I mean, the most famous one you've got is the Molnir, Thor's hammer. Okay. I wear a Molnir. It's a short-handled As, as do many heathens. As do many heathens, and it's generally a recognised symbol of heathenism. Mm. In whatever format... You've got your Thor's hammer is kind of a key symbol. Yeah. But it's short handled. It's like a craftsman's hammer. It's like a little lump <clears throat> hammer kind of hammer rather than a big war hammer hammer. Mm. Which is on a long handle so you can swing it. Yes. At things that may be between you and the half bottle behind the enemy lines. <laughs> Over the top, lads, and into him! <laughs> so with the, when the Molnir was made... There's a lovely, well, there's a very interesting story about how it was made and why it ends up short-handled rather than long-handled, because Loki's involved in that. Mm-hmm. Specifically okay. involved in that. So the Molnir is the most famousest of the mighty toys. Indeed. Yeah, you don't generally get pictures of Thor without it. That tends to be the identifying feature when you have a male figure. If it's got a hammer, that's it's what Thor. people identify with him. Because he's the only one who can lift it. He's the only one that can lift it. Apart from Steve Rogers, obviously. Yeah, and also Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers, the the, the children's TV guy. Oh, Oh, I'm sure he would. Excuse me, young man, did you drop this? (laughs) (laughs) No, it's fine, you can keep it. And Vision. But if you go back 
And everybody else. All right, okay, well. fine. If you go back to the original uh, Norse mythology, mm-hmm. the only reason he can lift the hammer is because he has a belt of, and gloves which give him the strength of a giant. Okay. That's the only reason he can lift this short handle workman's hammer. So in the original mythology, it's not actually to do with him being worthy. It's to do with him having this... The strength yeah. of a, uh, a belt of giant strength and his gauntlets, which are usually named something like iron grip. Okay. Which basically mean that he can lift it. And if you look at the older illustrations, the hammer is not like you see the Molnir now, where it has an oversized head. It's literally like a lump hammer. Okay. Craftsman's hammer. It's a small crafting tool. Yeah. I have to concede that a lot. Yeah, I've, I mean, I've said before on previous episodes but that a lot of the imagery I have in my head, I'm afraid, you know, without any, uh, without intending to to, mm. to <clears throat> belittle or diminish any of this, but inevitably, some a lot of the imagery in my head comes from Marvel. Yes. Um, and I have to remind myself that you know I have to sort of consciously remind myself sometimes that what I'm seeing there, if somebody says Thor, Chris Hems was the first pick, face I see. Yeah. And I know when I think about it that actually he, at least a, you know, as he's as he's portrayed in the majority of the films, he doesn't really represent the, the image of Thor as Thor is described in the sagas, mm. uh, in the sagas, the the, the Eddas and so forth. Mm. But I have to admit, you know, when I when I when I think of Mjolnir, I think of that great big massive cubic near night near yeah. cubic block that he carries around in 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 the mcu and, and it does make me think i mean because i know you said before it's supposed to be a craftsman's hammer it's not the whole point of it is that for whatever reason it's not a battle hammer mm. it's not a hammer it's a short handle built hammer. for killing people it's a yeah. hammer built for crafting and yes. building things yeah. and i've always sort of looked at the one that chris hemsworth lugging about and thinking I couldn't imagine hammering nails in with that. No, the the Mew Mew <laughs> needs to go on a diet, really. It's, yeah. uh, it needs to kind of come down a wee bit. Mm. His Molnir, the only reason he can lift it in the myth cycle and in the sagas is the fact that he has a belt and a pair of gauntlets that allows him to pick it up. Yeah. That They collectively give him the strength of a giant. And without those, he can't. Mm. If you look at the things that the Allfather has... He has a couple of shiny toys of his own. Okay. He has the gun gear, which I've mostly seen described as a spear, but I have seen one reference to it being a sword. All right. And now I'd always thought he had a spear. Now, the spear gun gear will hit anything it's thrown at. Okay. And I've also seen it referenced that it will cause fatal or grievous injuries to anything it injures. So it's pretty nasty piece of kit if there if it is attested i like that word mm. in the writings that it will hit anything it's thrown at and i would assume that suggests it's a spear because you wouldn't you don't throw a sword no swords are i have seen one reference that describes it as a sword and i'm like i'd always thought it was a spear mm. i'd always seen him in my head and his image was always a spear for me, not a sword. And I thought, because we've talked about this before, we've talked about the the the, the, the specifically the weapons that yes. the gods <clears throat> use. And mm. I remember there being a, 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 a sort of a particular point of the fact that the spear is a is essentially a poor soldier's weapon. Every man's weapon. Yeah. You you when you are um, when you are part of an army that's been raised from the local. Mm, community or whatever feared, yeah. the local society um you would have probably a spear because you would have it for hunting yeah you wouldn't have a sword a sword you, is going to be might have a hand axe and a spear yeah you whereas might might have a shield yeah but for a shield you've got to learn how to use it which means you have to take out time out of your crafting or farming or hunting schedule to learn to be trained in the use of a shield yeah only if you're a fairly professional warrior, mm. I'll say fairly professional, but you know what I mean. Only if you're only if you have time and resources to dedicate to fighting. Yeah. Would you have a sword? Yeah. Or logically, now mm. that would be how I would look at it. Mm. So for him to have a spear has always sat a little bit strange with me. He's the king of the gods. He's the all father, but he doesn't have a sword. No. He has a spear, 
but he's associated as a god with the nobility, with the higher levels of society. But he doesn't have their weaponry. He has the weapon of an everyman. But he's also the god who walks the roads in a, a ratty cloak and a floppy hat. Yeah, he does. You know? With a staff. Yeah. So, so he doesn't he doesn't sort of <clears throat> you know it's he doesn't appear on earth in 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 all manner of thunderous glory as a rule no he doesn't come down with all his war gear shining in in the in the aspect of a general mm. a war general a war leader a duke yeah dukes 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 so he comes down in an old cloak and an old hat pulled down over one eye mm. as a stranger but he could easily have arrived as a... A sort of grey pilgrim. <gasps> no. Sorry. <laughs> you are not. So, he has a spear. <coughs> he also has a ring, the Draupnir, which I've always seen not as a finger ring, but as an arm ring. Okay. And that ring, it's called Draupnir, the Dripper, is its English translation, which doesn't sound half as mysterious and sounds like a, you know, snotty eight-year-old on a Tuesday afternoon. <laughs> it's... Not as romantic to Ew. me. It's the the Draupnir sounds Draupnir. fantastic. The dripper okay. just sounds like you know. But it's got to be said, Norse words do this. They do. You know, you 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 take so many Norse words are basically English words, because clearly a lot of modern English is drawn from from Norse. You get a lot of it is Latin, a lot of it is Norse, a lot of it is is sort of French. Uh, French, yeah. I mean, French words tend to come to us through uh, Latin. Uh, from Latinate, Latin, don't yeah. they? But you've got all these sort of uh, the Germanic languages have come in. But you get a lot of Norse words that more or less come straight into English. I mean, like kettle. Kettle is the kettle. Yeah. Kettle is the Norse word for cauldron. Yeah. And we boil the kettle yes. because this is you know it's what you used to heat water in. Yeah. You know, with that that possible exception, you do find that Norse words just have a certain kind of m- mysterious mystic yeah oomph to them. So this is the dripper. The dripper. And the dripper is a, a ring which I've always taken as an arm ring, not a finger ring. Okay. And the dripper, every nine days, will drop eight new rings of the same quality as the original. Presumably That's... not with the same power as the original, because that could be... That's, that would be interesting. How, how long would it take the surface of the earth for the surface yeah, of the earth to be cover completely there. covered in rings? Love listeners around the virtual campfire, <laughs> go go have at it with the maths because my maths won't maths that much. Um, Every nine days, each one creates eight more rings. Yes, that's. I mean, at the very least, that's going to completely screw your economy, isn't it? Yeah, just a little bit. I mean, gold's going to become worthless overnight. Yeah, not overnight, but within a few. You are going to be building your halls out of it, though. You're going to be having some great games of quoits, like <laughs> horseshoes. <laughs> With the Draupnir. Everybody's going to have so many arm rings they can't even actually move their arms. Yeah, arms like noodles. <laughs> <laughs> Danger noodles! Danger noodles! Okay. Moving on. So, the Draupnir, the mm. Dripper, Odin's arm ring. Yep. You also have a few other well-known ones. You'll probably know of Freya's necklace, the Brisingaman. Yes. The amber necklace. Also, Brisingaman. something to do with a weird stone. Yeah, I read that as like, uh, I actually had that read to me in primary school. Yeah. Which was flipping awesome. I think. Like, rainy Friday afternoons, <sighs> my tutor would say, right, everybody pens down after break, and the last hour or so, he would read Weirdstone of the Brisingerman. Nice. I I only remember it in very sketchy detail. I I remember the feeling of it more than the actual story. Yeah. And I remember, I think I listened to it at one point as well. Did I have it on tape or something? <clears throat> Just for, for, for reference, um, a tape was an old uh, recording medium. Old um, earth recording medium. Old... <laughs> there, there was like these plastic cartridges you used to put in machines and they would... They would have a strip of magnetic tape that worked from one reel to another. Yeah. Various incarnations. It's all very primitive. I know. <laughs> Used to wind them backwards and forwards with a biro. I did! <laughs> Just spin round to get to your favourite track. Yep. 
<laughs> anyway, yes. So, uh, Brisingerman is the so necklace have... of Freya. Necklace of the Freya. Brisingerman, the necklace of the Brisings. Okay. Now, there is a story behind how she gets the Brisingerman. But we I are a family not show. I'm going to recite it <laughs> because we are a family show and the <clears throat> redactions would be longer than what was left of the story. Yeah. It'll be like um, it'll be like the music they play on Radio 1. Yeah, when they beep out all the beeping where they have to, Where they have to keep, keep blanking out. They just use silences. Yeah. And it's like after a while, there are some songs where it's like, I must have only heard one in every three or four words. Yes. I don't know what this song's about. Yeah, well, if you took all the naughty bits out of how Freya gets the Brisingerman, you would end up hearing about every third word. We're not going to recite it because it, this is a family show and lovely listeners, we don't know how old you are listening around the virtual campfire and we would rather protect your delicate sensibilities. Because God's forbid. God's forbid <laughs> you should talk about Nookie on here. It's not a good idea. And so, besides, the cat's here and she's too young. She's definitely too young. She's looking a bit nonplussed about now, but never mind. So, Actually, she moving over 18, on. So. She is over 18 in human years. Mm. Moving on, Frey. Frey! He of the Golden Bristles Boar. Gullenbursty. Gullenbursty. He has uh, gifted to him what they call a, you might see it described as a folding ship or a collapsible ship. A collapsible ship? And this is a ship, a full-sized ship, that when he is not using it, he literally folds it or collapses it, and he puts it in his pocket. I want one! I know, right? It's just like, unfold it, use it, fold it back up again, put it away. Only can I have mine as an Imperial Clipper? Let's see what I can do. We'll like, have to get like extra big pockets. Like a spaceship? Yeah. That'd be nice. Okay. I've got a lot of use for it. I live in Derbyshire. It's like the middle of the United Kingdom. Yeah. And as large, far as you can get... Large a... bodies of water do not really exist here. We are, in fact, furthest from the sea. We are. And, and, and you know, as far from the sea as you can get in the United Kingdom, which I appreciate from the point of view of some of our listeners won't seem very far. No. But as far as you can get from the sea in the United Kingdom, that's how far from the sea we are. Yeah. So a boat... Might not be brilliant unless we can fit it to a really big roller skate. Yeah. Or, or, it has some sea around the bottom of it that's part of the package. Yeah, and we can just sail it in that sea and just move the sea with it. Yeah. Yeah. Just unfold it, like, you know, at the top of our hill. Yeah. Unfold it, drop it down onto the road. Yeah. And it's sailing on a, on a little bubble of, of, of water. water. And then you can get on the ship... Sail it down the road into town. Yeah. Fold it up with water and everything. Put it in your pocket. Do your shopping. Yeah. Then just throw it down in... Saves on parking charges. Yeah, throw it down in like the car park or something. Okay. <laughs> up it goes. See, around bubble around yeah. the bottom of it. Okay. And then we can just sail it back up the hill again. Assuming a, a favourable wind, obviously. Yeah. This I've got whole images in my head of this being the most awesome car wash business. That'd be good. Yeah. You just drive it down residential streets and wash the cars as your little bubble of water goes ah, past. Ah, but it's salt water. They don't know that. So they'll end up with like a, a white kind of crust over their cars? Mm. Maybe that, not. They might not like that. They might not. I'm not sure what it'll do to the paint. Maybe, but having said that, I suppose we could we could have it fresh water. No sure. reason why not. It doesn't specify, but it does specify that he's gifted a ship that collapses. You'll see it described as that it collapses or folds okay so that he can put it in his pocket when he's not using it nice which i think is quite cool. is this dwarves again this is dwarves again okay they are pretty handy with the stuff they are yeah pretty ingenuous ingenu ingenuitous ingenuitous ingenuitous. <laughs> like, ingenuitous like i said last episode i'm very keen on words <sighs> dear. okay even making them up at random yes now there are quite a few swords involved with this as well mm -hmm. and some of the swords have names okay if you go to Heimdall you know he has the Galahorn which he blows to signal the, it's the herald of war isn't it yes yeah the Galahorn his his blowing horn mm. but he also has a sword and now it, the word translates as man or manhood for his sword oh really I know okay yeah 
So it's that kind of sword, is it? I did not need to know. No, I didn't need that image. <laughs> the lay of rig has nothing on this. Just stop making these parallels. I'm never going to look at Idris Elba the same way you again. Are, you don't look at Idris Elba the same way anyway. That is that's actually absolutely true. <laughs> so. <sighs> Come you. on, give me a chance. Okay. All right. Idris, if you're listening, give me a chance. No! <laughs> <gasps> Woman! Uh, you also have a a reference to Loki's sword, and it's it's odd whether the word translates to sword or staff. Some people have translated it to staff rather than sword. Okay. And it's called the damage twig. Wait. Go on then. I just want to recap. Okay. This is Loki. Please do this. Yes. The trickster. Yeah. <clears throat> Tom Hiddleston. It, in a he, certain iteration, yes. In my in my in my head. Yeah. And he has a sword or possibly a staff. Mm-hmm. And it's called Yeah. The Damaged Twig. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's called the Damaged Twig. <laughs> I'm not gonna laugh because I'm. I have a feeling it's probably something that's that's named like you know, with an inoffensive, laughable name, so that when he when when he comes at you, it's like being hit by the Death Star. Yeah. Yeah. Damage twig laser beam. Something along those lines. <laughs> yeah. The damage twig. But it's translated as the damage twig. I think that is the most beautiful name for. A hand-to-hand -hand weapon, a melee weapon, I think I've ever heard. <laughs> it's brilliant. You might see the name for it either spelt with an H or spelt with an L. The damage twig? No. In its in its name, the damage twig translates to. Oh, I see! You might see the original name spelt with an L or with an H. Okay. And they still haven't they're still having a wee bit of a to and fro over which translation it is. Okay. But it generally gets translated to damage twig. The damage twig. I think that's that's beautiful. Okay. Let's move to one a bit more familiar. Okay. Falcon cloaks. Oh Frigga, yes. Frigga and Freya are both said to have a falcon cloak. Mm -hmm. Or a falcon coat, you might see it referred to as. Yep. And that gives them the ability to fly as a falcon. Now that it doesn't clarify whether it turns them into a falcon. Okay. Or whether it allows them to fly it as in human form, the cloak allows them to fly it as a falcon. Yeah. I haven't worked out which one it is yet. Okay. If you want to get really fun, I would include in this list of mighty toys, Sif's hair. Okay. At one point in the myth cycle, for a, a, a pun or joke or hijinks... A pun or play on words. Yes. Loka <clears throat> cuts off all of her hair. And she gets very angry. I don't mean to be all 21st century about this, but that's not hijinks, that's abuse. It is a little bit, a lot abusey. Basically, he, sh he shorns, shorns? Shears? Shears, yeah. He shears all of her hair off. Okay. Every last bit of it. And nice. She prefers not to rock the bald look and basically demands of Loka in recompense hair as good or better than her original hair right well i mean that's fair enough which is where a lot of these mighty hair toys i can't believe you just said that i had to that was bad i had to bad 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 you'd James have been bad. cross if i hadn't if i'd let that go through un 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 unsaid you'd have you'd have been why didn't you afterwards like we'd be sitting there you're processing these files and stuff and you'd be saying why didn't you say hair enough? It would have been hilarious. Hilarious. It would have been. It would have... They'd have been... They'd be rolling in the aisles, you'd have said to me. And I'd have said, I don't... Honestly, I don't know. It just didn't occur to me at the time. I guess I wasn't sharp enough. I guess I wasn't like... <coughs> razor enough. And, uh, and... 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 Uh, I'd have felt foolish, frankly. Um, so... <laughs> It's one of those situations where, you know, you can see all that coming. You think, I can, I can change the future. You know, I can take hold of my destiny. And I can, 
I can take steps to ensure that 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 sense of hopeless failure just does never does never arise. <laughs> to put it another way it was a weak joke and I thought I'd give it a snap <laughs> oh, <dear. sighs> okay yeah sips there oh. long story very much shorter Loka returns with hair <laughs> that is made from gold spun gold that's Good on him. fine as threads fair and he it's gives good. the whole head of that Sif's wig to her, and it's all made of gold threads, so it shines a lot brighter than her original blonde head. That's nice. And so, yeah, I would count Sif's hair kind of in the list of mighty toys. Yeah. Dwarves really, again. Yeah, dwarves again. I say so, dwarves, I should say Dvergar, mm, shouldn't I? Yes, well, they're... It's odd because they're described as lesser beings, but they're not described as shorter beings. No, that's the thing, because we, we sort of think of dwarves as... We tend to think of them like Gimli. Yeah. Or or Glowin or Owen or... or, or Balin. Bomber or Balin or... You know, all them. Anyway, all them. But we tend to think of them as... as... Shorter, stout... Yeah. Craftspeople who mine and <clears throat> do metalwork and do gem work. But aren't they... Aren't they a kind of elf? Yeah. Because you've got the Alfar, the Svart Alfar, and the Dvergar are a different kind of elf, I seem to recall. So, yeah. they, so in Tolkien terms... Different probably... race of beings. Yeah. But they're very much known for their craft work, hence the list of mighty toys. Indeed, yeah. yeah. Most of which come from the dwarves, or are mm. attributed to different sets of dwarves. Mm. You've also got... One that I found out recently was Svalin, the the shield that protects the earth from the full power of the sun. Okay. So it stops the earth getting burned. Ozone? Yeah. Svalin invented ozone. Svalin is ozone. Oh, okay, fair enough. Oh, that's the name of the shield? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I was thinking, because it sounded a bit like Balin, I, I thought that was probably the name of the dwarf in question. but No, no not quite. Okay. So this is the shield that protects the earth from the full force of the sun. Wow. Stops the earth from getting burned. Which is pretty woke for the 10th century. I was going to say, that's that's quite an insight, isn't it? Yeah, pretty When you think that the, the idea that the, the need to be something Between to shield us. Yeah. I mean, we yeah, we, all right, we know about ozone and, and, and the various layers of atmosphere and, you know, the magnetic field keeping mm. a lot of the particles off us and all that kind of thing. Yeah, they they obviously had something. There was something in somebody's mind that went, "That's actually powerful enough to to scorch us out if it if it wants to." Yeah, yeah. So there is the the imagery they have is that it's a shield. Nice. So it's a shield that prevents the earth from being burned. Okay. The shield of the sun that prevents us from getting singed to a crisp. If you want to get all technical about this list of mighty toys, you've also got the high seat of Odin. Allows him to see across the nine worlds. Which I am absolutely not envisaging as being made of swords. Mm. But you get the impression, you get the feeling now that it should have been. Yeah, maybe. I mean, there are, I don't think there are any descriptions of what the high seat looks like. Then it's made of swords. Okay, fine. I'm sorry. Um, just speaking is. of swords, and you know you've got the sword of Handal, you've possibly got the sword of Loki. Mm -hmm. You've also got an unnamed sword that Frey has. Okay. And it's his, you know, it's a kind of a shiny thing. And he, the sword of Frey, which is never given a name, is given away. He gives it away so that he can woo the giantess that he's fallen in love with. That's right, yes. So when it comes to the Ragnarok, he stands without a weapon because he'd already given his away for love. Oh, kind of for lust, really. Lechery. Lechery. <laughs> he gave it away for lechery isn't quite as romantic, but it's probably slightly more accurate. But the curious <laughs> thing is what that story... And I, I, I take it... Yeah, I'm treating the stories as, as, as sort of 
mythology, i.e. a story which is intended to teach you a thing, hmm. um, which is how I tend to view... Because we've, in the modern day, we tend to have this, this very binary way of looking at stories. It's, it's something is either historically true, literally, or it's a lie. Hmm. It's a falsehood. And I tend to kind of kick out against that because I, I've, I mean, I've had many, many arguments with, with people who have talked about um, Greek mythology and even even uh, a lot of sort of like the parables in Christian texts. Mm. And they've said, well, you know, that couldn't possibly have happened because it's impossible. It goes against physics, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, yeah, there are a couple of ways of interpreting it. Either you say, well, never mind physics, it happened because mm. it says so in the book. Or you say, well, oh, no, it didn't happen exactly like that but it's there to teach you something yeah <clears throat> and that's the point of it so it's like there to give you a message on how to live life or how not to do life Grimm's fairy tales are often these are the things you do not do yeah because they are dangerous and yeah. so we're going to make up a story as to why it's dangerous so you remember the story and don't do the thing that's right I mean treating you know putting aside the mythological tutelary um, dentistry dent tutelary dentistry <laughs> Um, putting aside the possibility that the story is, is trying to teach us something, or whatever the story is trying to teach us, from a literal standpoint. Why didn't he get another sword? I mean... don't know. He had time. He did. And it's not as if they're thin on the ground It's around Valhalla and Asgard. Uh, yeah, you know, you'd have thought somebody would have just let him borrow a spare one, but they don't, and he actually goes to the Ragnarok without a weapon. He's not going to come out that well, is he? No, no. Didn't quite come out that well. No. But there you go. I want to finish <laughs> this episode off with a lesser known mighty toy. Okay. And this mighty toy is, it comes from a Frisian story, Frisia. All right. And you may or may not know of a god called Forseti, and he's often titled as Asgard's judge. I think I've heard the name, but I can't say I would have any, any knowledge. Yeah. So there's not a lot about him, to be honest. But there is one story where he has an axe. Okay. And there is, it's a, a, a Frisian story in which Charlemagne... So it's a little bit... I was going to say, Charlemagne? Yeah, Charlemagne is trying to get all of the laws together for Frisia. Okay. So he calls together 12 of the law speakers, the, lear the learned people, and says, get your act together and give me one set of laws so I can write them down. I want to codify them. I want to codify them. I want to stick them in a wee book and that'll be it and mm -hmm. it's done. And the law speakers are all like, w but we can't because there's so many different aspects to our laws that we can't mm. write down one official set because there's all sorts of judgments and things that get done. So Charlemagne says, right, either you give me a complete set of your law codes or I'm going to stick you in a boat in the middle of the ocean. OK. It's a little bit imaginative for Charlemagne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the law guys are like, but can't. So Charlemagne sticks them on a boat in the middle of the ocean. And the Man of his word, clearly. Twelve law guys are like, oh, fudge, that went well. You know, well, that could have gone better. <laughs> are they naked? They are not. Actually, the story doesn't tell me they're naked, so if it helps you to imagine 12 guys in a boat naked, do it. I'm just thinking if of you Mal Reynolds. If not, then you <clears throat> don't have to. That's fine. I'm just thinking of Mal Reynolds at the beginning of that episode, sitting in the desert going, all naked. Well, that could have been that better. That could have gone better. Yeah. Um, so there's 12 guys in a boat, mm -hmm. and they're like, oh, you should have seen that one coming. Didn't. Well, he did tell you he, he was going to do it. He did tell you he was going to do it, and uh, you're in a boat, and you're now in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> so they sit there, and they pray together, and they pray to their god, Forseti. Okay. And a 13th man appears in their midst with an axe, and he uses the axe to steer the boat, it says. How he does this, I don't know, but he uses the axe to steer the boat. I would have thought an oar would have been better, but, you know... Sacred axe, sacred ore. I'm probably going to go with the axe. If you turn a single-bladed axe mm. upside down, it yeah. doesn't look dissimilar to a tiller-rudder yeah. arrangement. So he said he used the axe <clears throat> to steer the boat. 
And when they came to an island, he threw the axe, and where it hit the ground, a spring of fresh water sprang up. Okay. And he then taught them the laws of this new land and disappeared. So for the Frisians, they have an axe associated with Forseti. Okay. And that sacred springs, uh, sacred freshwater springs are sacred to him because of the spring that he made on the island. Nice. So I'm going to leave you with a, maybe, you know, it might be a new bit of tale for you. It might be something that you already know. Yeah. It's all good. Certainly not one I'd run into. Lovely listeners, if you can think of any more mighty toys, let us know. Yes. And Was you. that a mighty toy? Yeah. You are definitely a mighty toy. A little squeaky mouse. You are an absolute unit. <laughs> <laughs> little squeaky mouse mighty toy. Oops, yeah. there we go. Ears. Mind your ears. There you are. So, lovely listeners, if you can think of any more Mighty Toys, let us know. Mm. Come and say hi. If you want to find either of us online, my name's Suzanne Martin. I'm on Facebook as Suzanne Martin, or I'm on Twitter at Geetha in Jeans. And if you want to find me, uh, I have a, um, a, a, a kind of a, a half-hearted um, website held together with duct tape at glassrain.net. Dust bunnies. Dust bunnies. Just glassrain.net. No dust bunnies. Okay. I might add some dust bunnies. And uh, you can also find me on Facebook as Kate Colvin. Come and say hello. Yeah. So, lovely listeners, we will leave you around the virtual campfire pondering the mighty toys of Indeed. the gods and goddesses. And we will talk to you all next time for episode 61. 61. Bye bye. See you soon. Bye. i